All right, guys, welcome to our Thursday night call. I am so excited about this one um, because this is a topic that I am definitely not well versed in. I have built my business solely through Facebook and I've known for a long time that I really want to make the, the leap over to Instagram and I've been trying to do that but I just don't have the Instagram best practices. I know I'm not using it to the best of its ability and I want to really maximize my social media presence across um, different platforms because I know that you know the, the longer that you're in this business and the more you're in this business, there's so much opportunity to grow your network through strangers um, that you might not necessarily know. And I think Instagram is a really great platform for that, whereas Facebook seems to be more about your own personal network, your own personal um, friendships and those types of things. And it's harder to grow organically and to grow that network. So I um, asked Trisha to be on the call tonight because you guys, she is a phenomenal, phenomenal attraction marketer on Instagram. She has, she is a um, stay at home mom. She homeschools and she was homeschooled herself. And she started, when she started Plexus, she didn't have a very big network at all. But you guys, she grew her entire business on Instagram and she has signed 175 to 200 level ones. But get this guys, 90% of those people have been strangers that she did not know, um, did not know in her life, had met them post Plexus through the internet. And I think that that is just a, it's a true testament to show you that what is possible with a small network. This is a huge deal and a huge tool that we really need to be taking advantage of. And so I wanted her to get on here and share her tips and tricks. She is an Emerald ambassador. So she is flying through the ranks of Plexus and has had so much success. So Trisha, if you're there, can you unmute yourself and take it away? Hey guys. So first of all, I wanted to say that when I started this business, I, I searched Sarah Taylor Plexus on YouTube and I watched like every video she had, like especially the Silver and Seven and our team has done your Silver and Seven videos. So anyway, this is like a huge honor. Um, okay, I wanted to start off by sharing a little bit of my story and how I even came to have an Instagram presence. And guys, it pretty much was born out of us being broke. That's kind of where my Instagram came, came from. Um, I had a blog, it was this tiny little blog, and we didn't have any money, so we started a furniture business. And we started this furniture business in our garage the same month I became a preferred customer. Um, so I had like 200 followers, and my, my first post, I had no interest in the business. I was just a preferred customer. I posted a picture of my pink drink and I said like, wish me luck. And I got like 12 likes. Okay. Um, and I did not mention Plexus again. That was October, 2015 until May, 2016. So that was my first post. and I never talked about it again. Um, but anyway, guys, we were broke. We were making, I had four kids at the time. The oldest was probably five. Um, we were making an average of about $750 a month. Um, my husband had a property management business, which was not working. And we had taken all of our savings. My husband had worked at the FBI and we had saved up money. And my parents had given us money. And we took a lot of it, a lot, a lot, a lot of it. And we put it into this business. And pretty quickly we discovered it was not going to work. Obviously, there were some months that we were living off nothing. Um, and then there were other months that I would cry and I would look at our bank account and I'd be like, oh my goodness, you know, is there any money at all in this business that you can pay us? So that's where we were. So one month I was like, okay, let's go to Goodwill and we're going to find furniture and we're going to take it back to our garage and we're going to sand it and we're going to paint it. And I was getting up at 4 a.m. and I was posting about it on my Instagram, guys. That is how my Instagram was born, okay? And I was doing all the hashtags. And I don't, like, I had no idea what I was doing, but I knew I was supposed to do hashtags. So I did, like, before and after and furniture business and all this other stuff. And I kind of stumbled across this home decor community, and I became a home decor account, okay? And by the time that I decided to start an actual Plexus business, I had between twelve and 14,000 followers. But they were all from just furniture redoing and then redoing our house. So when I had like 299 followers on my Instagram, I, and I redid our bedroom on a budget 
I completely redid our bedroom for like $200 and I entered a contest, another hashtag contest that I found and I got featured by a really big account and that took me to a thousand and then after that I kind of discovered this thing called networking, which is really funny because I feel like I learned how to network before I started network marketing and this is what, this is like the basis for Instagram guys is this networking thing, okay? So I would message I, I kind of had it in my mind that I wanted to make money. Like we had to make money somehow and my Instagram was growing. So I was like, okay, we can make money for my Instagram and my Instagram has to be big. Like I need to have 5,000 followers. I need to have 10,000 followers. So I would write to small shops and I would say like, Hey, let's do a giveaway together. I would, um, I said in my Instagram video that I would trade features and I've gotten so many messages from people saying, what do you mean trade features? Okay. So um, all those hashtags, right guys? So hashtag homeschool, hashtag homeschool mama, right? I found people through those hashtags, even things like hashtag living room, hashtag living room decor. Um, and we became friends. So like I would message them and then I'd be like, Hey, I have an idea. If you share my account on Tuesday, then what about if like, then that, that's what I mean by trading features. Like I would actually take their picture and I would put it on my feed and I would say all the things I loved about that person and then she would do that for me. And guys, it worked and I grew. Does that make sense? Does that like training features thing make sense? Um, so now stories, which are like those little videos are like way more watched than your feed. So now people do that same thing. I watch it every single day, guys. People do this trading features thing, okay? So they find people that are like them and they will feature them, and then a few days later, you'll see them getting featured. And that's how people grow. And I also did giveaways. Um, I did so many giveaways. Like some of them I would pay for, some of them I would not pay for. Here's an example of something I just did, okay? Because I'm still in the process of growing. I have like 29,000 followers now, but I'm always, always, always trying to grow. So I found like five total strangers to me that all had similar hashtags, similar interests, and I said, let's all pitch $5 and let's give away a Target gift card. And we all posted it on our account and they had to follow every single one of us, which means I got, you know, 100, 200 new followers. And then this is what I do. I message every single one of those new followers and I do not mention Flexus. Um, I say, hey, you are so sweet for following me. I really appreciate it. My name is Trisha. I chat on my feed and on my stories about homeschooling, motherhood, minimalism, like decorating your house and health, and I would love to know about you. So I just did this, guys, like right before this call. I was just doing this, and a girl wrote back, and she was like, hey, thanks for reaching out to me. Um, so here's a little bit about me. I'm traveling in the United States in an RV. So I write back to her, and I'm like, that is so awesome. We've been thinking about doing that too. Tell me, is it expensive? So then she writes back and she's like, no, I really don't think it's that expensive because I do X, Y, Z. I write back to her. What are we doing, guys? This is, this is how I sign strangers, okay? It's all about connection and building trust. Do you not, like, that's what it's about. So this is what happens. I am not going to sign this girl today. I'm not going to sign her tonight. We haven't discussed Plexus at all, but I can pretty much guarantee Within the next month or two months, people like her are going to be messaging me because this happens and they say, okay, I've been watching you for like two months. What are you talking about this pink drink thing? And I sign them. So that's kind of what I've been doing. I absolutely love that. I think that's one of the most, <laughs> I never thought about that. And when you talked about on your call the other day about the trading features, I was like, what does she mean? What is she talking about trading features? There's no features. I didn't mean you were feature. I didn't realize you were featuring the other person. Um, and so that whole concept was so foreign to me, but I'm blown away by, so tell me a little bit about like how you choose when, how much do you post about Plexus? How do you get, you know, how much, how much time do you spend, spend authentically posting and, and creating a story through your feed versus doing the features and all those types of things, right? So that it becomes more personal on your Instagram feed. Okay. Um, one out of three posts is Plexus. Okay. So it's either a testimony. Um, and someone just asked, do I mention Plexus? Guys, I pretty much don't. 
because of compliance, you know. Um, so I really, really try not to mention Plexus at all. I just had my link and I took my link down. Like, I don't want Plexus really associated with me. Um, but anyway, it's pretty much one out of three posts. And sometimes it will be in my feed and sometimes it will be in my stories. Um, yeah. And what is your Instagram handle? I know a couple people were asking that. What's the name of your account? It's called Clean House with Kids. Clean House with Kids. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I was looking at her account, you guys, the other day, and it is beautiful. There is a just there's certain color schemes that she uses. It's it kind of all flows together. It makes you want to see more. It's attraction marketing at its finest. I mean, because when you're scrolling Facebook or when you're scrolling um, Instagram and everything like that. There are certain posts that make you feel like uh, you are walking down the center of a mall and those you, those kiosk people are chasing you down and they're like, bye, Plexus, bye, Plexus. You want to be the person that is sought out because your feed is interesting. And that's exactly what Trisha has been able to accomplish. It looks interesting. You come back for more because you want to see what she's going to say next. You want it. You're drawn in. And I love the tips that you said. This is, this is how horrible I am at Instagram. I didn't even know you could message on Instagram. I thought it was all comments. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot that I can definitely learn on that. So with the stories, what type, what type of stuff do you put up in the story feature? I know Rebecca. Okay. Enough. No more comments from Rebecca. <laughs> Okay, um, so today I like, sometimes I'll do pictures, sometimes like I'll do videos. I okay, here's something else, guys, and that is called adding value. So, so, so important. It's the same thing with the trading features, right? It's not, it's not all about you. It's about adding value to someone else, right? Um, so it's the same thing with stories. So I try every single day to do a video on there, just like I'm doing right here. Um, either live or just those tiny little videos that you can do. And very rarely are they about Plexus. Very rarely. Um, like I did one the other day about like, where did your husband propose? And my husband pro proposed to me at Walmart. And I got a whole bunch of comments. And so like, I was like, hey, I'm gonna be going live at 2 p.m. and I'm gonna share our proposal story. But here's the thing. I got a message as soon as I finished that video and I did not mention Plexus. I did not mention supplements. And the person messaged me about Plexus. And I think it's the whole like drawing the person in. If they feel like they know you and then you're their friend, then they're going to be more likely to want to know about what you're selling. But you're not selling. You know what I mean? No, I love that. I think that's perfect because people don't, they don't want to be sold to and they want to feel like it was their idea to reach out and they want to feel like, okay, I'm not just watching advertisement after advertisement. I like Trisha. So whatever she's a part of, I want to be a part of. Um, and I mean, that's attraction marketing at its most basic level. Um, what, what, so on the stories, um, when you go live and, or when you post the stories, you said that you trade features on the stories as well. How does that work on the, like on the actual story? Okay. Um, one thing that a lot of people do is they're just going to screenshot a, a picture from someone else's feed gotcha. and then put it on their story and tag them. Okay. Okay. I was trying to figure out, cause I know I have actually posted, I've been using the story feature, but I was trying to figure out how you would actually trade on that. Okay. Yeah. Um, does anybody, is, is that all you had or I was, let me see. I like actually wrote down notes. Okay. Um, okay. So do you want me to go through a few of my notes? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Um, Number one, I think that this is really important. If you guys watched the Zoom that Laura Robinson and Marianne did a few days ago, um, Marianne is actually my level one, which I'm super lucky. <laughs> um, but this is what I would do when you're starting out your Instagram. Number one, pick a name that does not have the word Plexus in it. Oh my goodness. So many people are like living healthy because of Plexus. And I'm like, guys, no one's going to follow you. Um, so you have to do something that's like not Plexus related. But anyway, find three things, three to five things, and one of those can be Plexus. And then post about one of those things. Um, so I typically post on my Instagram three times every single day. 
I post before 6.30 a.m. I post sometime between like 12 and 2, and then I post again in the evening, usually, okay? And there's a huge, there's a huge thing about being consistent that people know, like you almost become part of, someone wakes up in the morning, they pick up their coffee, they pick up their newspaper, that's what you are, okay? So they wake up every single morning, and they know that Trisha posted, and they have a pretty good guess what Trisha posted about, because it's always in one of those five things, okay? Um, so sometimes in the morning, I will do a plexus testimony, but sometimes I'll like switch it up, so they're not quite sure what to expect, and I'll do it in the evening, um, and then in the, in the morning, I'll do something about motherhood, or about minimalism, or something else in those five things. Um, pictures, guys, it's not like Facebook. On Facebook, you could pretty much post any picture and people would be okay with it. On Instagram, it's not like that. So for example, for Christmas, I said, okay, yeah, I do Facebook too. Um, so for Christmas, I was like, okay, my general color scheme is probably white, gray, blue, black maybe, but I'm also going to do pops of red around Valentine's Day. Like it's intentional. The colors that you photograph, then I was going to do like for a whole month, I do pops of pink, which means even the clothes that my kids are wearing, this sounds crazy, but it really makes a difference. Okay. So then they're going to be wearing like a pink bow or pink flowers or whatever, things like that. And it doesn't have to be like every single picture like that, but it really does make a difference because they say that when someone is deciding if they're going to follow you or not, they look at your top six pictures, your top two rows, and it's like a five-second decision, and then they click off. So anyway, um, that was that consistency. I do three times a day. Um, okay, so algorithm. Oh, my goodness. It's just a nutty, nutty algorithm, but basically... This is why you want things that have engagement or value because the more people, this is kind of like Facebook, the more people engage right away and then you comment back to them, the higher it boosts your um, posts, just like Facebook. And I, the other thing I would say is be vulnerable and be you and share your story. And um, so yeah, someone asked if I've done Facebook too. I did when I was pregnant with Eleanor, who's number five, I did two Facebook lives where I ugly cried, like bad, bad crying. Um, and I was pregnant, so I think it's okay. Um, but anyway, one I was talking about, I had just gotten off the phone with an interviewer. Um, and he, one of the questions that he'd asked, I was being paid for the interview. I don't remember what I was, maybe a senior gold when I did this. But anyway, he had asked, do you ever worry that your food will run out? And I hesitated. And as soon as I finished that phone call, I got on my Facebook and I did a live and someone joined like five minutes later because, because when people see that you're not just selling something like you are a broken girl with a broken family and you are chasing a dream with whatever it takes, no excuses, even if you're going to ugly cry, they will join you and they will run too. So. I love that. Um, and I think the vulnerability and authenticity is so important. You know, you can make it pretty and you can post all these things and do everything. But you've still got to bring yourself um, because that's what people are going to connect with. They're going to connect with you putting yourself out there. Um, and Emily was asking, there was a couple questions. Emily was asking, so you, you coordinate the color of your Instagram feed. And I can tell you guys, um, one of the things, if you go onto Instagram, I want to give you guys a challenge. I have to get off this team call tonight. Hop on Instagram and go and just start looking, following some hashtags, looking at different people and seeing, um, look at hers first, you know, see what their account looks like. Rachel Rogers is a great one too, where hers is all bright colors. It's, it, it draws you in because it's uniform. It has bright colors or it has all, you know, uh, navies and yellows or, you know, just whatever theme that they have kind of gone with. Um, Joanna Gaines, you know, bright, you know, the, the whites and the greens and everything like that. So it, it draws you in, makes you interested. It looks professional. It looks pretty, but it's still 
her, it's still Trisha. It's like she's posting about her kids. They just happen to be wearing the bright pink bow that she is using as the current theme on her page. Um, and you can deviate from that theme, like she was saying, you know, her Christmas was one thing and then she transitioned into another thing. And it's not, this isn't necessary. It just adds interest and makes people want to be around you, follow you, see how you're doing. It's artistically pleasing and it makes them interested in it. Um, Jennifer Rand, I think it was, I'm scrolling back up. Um, asked about so when you post to instagram do you do that little feature where it says post to facebook too and they post at the same time or do you post them separate i post them separately okay if you do do that i'm pretty sure that um it will not get seen on facebook like a very very small percentage that it will actually get seen at all um and i do try to like mix things up a little bit and facebook just has a different feel so sometimes i will post the same wording and sometimes i won't and sometimes i'll post the same picture with different wording Absolutely. So are you, so when you go out, are you, how many, are you actually going out and following people as well? So you're actually seeking others out as well to do the whole, you know, follow back kind of thing. So are you, when you go and start following someone, are you messaging them as well about their feed? Okay. Mm -hmm. that's, so that's the other thing I'll do is I will like, okay, the other day I typed in hashtag target dollar section because I love the target dollar section. And I was like, I'm going to find five, I'm going to find five new people that I would genuinely be friends with. I'm going to follow them first. One of them has a blog. So I read her blog post and then I message them. So I will follow them and then maybe leave a comment and then I'll message them. And it's a genuine message. It's and then almost always they'll follow you back. Yeah. I think that's just so genius, and I love the fact that it's not just all Plexus. You are bringing in, um, Amy Welch and I were talking about this the other day, you know, picking five pillars, five things that you are personally interested in. So whether that's like rescue dogs or your kids or um, religion or um, home decorating, farmhouse decor, whatever that is, you know, picking those things that are your interest and kind of sticking with those five things as your theme, as your overall like things to post about and making Plexus the like far secondary. And it can be things like health and recipes. I mean, that goes with Plexus too. And you're attracting a good crowd that way. Or it can be workout stuff, whatever it is that you're actually interested in, you're actually passionate about post and instead of being that kiosk girl like hey plexus 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 you know it's changing it up so that people are actually making that connection with you um i love it did anybody um rebecca wanted to know what you say when you message somebody that you have just started following um normally i'll say hey it looks like we okay i always use their name always use their name. If, if they have a name, you need to use their name. Um, hey, Sarah, it looks like we've got some mutual. Okay. Hey, Sarah, I just followed you. It looks like we've got some mutual interests. It's so funny. You used almost the exact same Valentine's Day stuff from the Target dollar section that I did in my house. Um, and then I'll ask a question. So if it's like a homeschool mom, how do I decide what to use for hashtags? Okay. So if it's a homeschool mom, I might say like end with a question. And with a question like, hey, so what curriculum are you using now? Because it means that they have to reply. <laughs> Get the back and forth going. Um, yeah, the hashtags, isn't there like a hashtag app or a generator or something like that that shows you what are the trending hashtags? I think Celeste was talking about that at one point. Do you know the name of that app? I don't. Hash me. Okay. They all, okay. They all know it. I just don't. <laughs> um, Yes. And then, so I know that it used to be like 30 hashtags and now they're saying to do less, like seven quality hashtags, right? On mm -hmm. Instagram. <laughs> Everybody else is, uh, thank you, Emily, for agreeing. Instagram is seriously like, I am here to tell you guys, I do not know everything. This is a, such a foreign um, concept to me, but it's something I see the value in it so much. Like there is so you could seriously open up your business with just focusing on Instagram and focusing on your social media presence and branding yourself. I think that's a really, really big deal. Social media is a huge, enormous tool if we focus on it and we put out exactly what 
you know, we put out a, a specific brand, we put out a specific message that we want to be shared. And it's not just generally like a, um, you know, hop on Facebook and, and say what's on your mind kind of thing. It's more of an intentional branding, intentional um, social media usage to bring people in and to be interested in your life. And I think Trisha is just such a perfect example of what can be possible. I mean, she started this and she didn't have a huge following. It's not like she started with, you know, 27,000 um, Instagram followers. You guys should start with 200. That's a very normal size account. That's a very, you know, and she just worked at growing it intentionally. And so I think that that's something that all of us can really kind of step out and step into and it'll open up a whole new world um, for you guys and expand your network exponentially. I mean, I can go up to church and join church groups and do all that kind of thing, which is important. And, you know, making connections in real life is clearly important, but the power of, of social media and social networking is exponentially larger. You know, you can reach so many more people in a day than you could walking the grocery store aisles, you know? Um, okay. So I, it is, 8.30. It's about to be 8.30, so I don't want to keep you any longer, but I really, really appreciate it. I love all of this, and it was so helpful. I'm probably going to have to go back and watch it again, um, but we really, really appreciate it, you guys, and just some announcements for the team. We still have the preferred customer. Um, free shipping is still going on, so you guys definitely be talking about that. We're kicking off our seven-day trial group on Monday, and um, so definitely be getting your, your people into there. And then um, we still have the double silver incentive, you guys. And I know there's some great incentives coming um, teaser for next month too. So you guys, those silvers are gonna be so important to get everybody on, get everybody silver that you possibly can because it's gonna be a great March incentive, okay guys? Um, thank you guys for hopping on and Trisha, thank you so much. I'm so appreciative of all the knowledge that you shared with us tonight. And, um, I know everybody else is as well on um, the chats blowing up. So thank you. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye everybody.